Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to walk you through VHS from Red Giant Universe. You'll locate the VHS effect inside the RG Universe stylized category of your video effects. I'll drag this effect and apply it to my video clip. Now, if you've never used VHS before, I'll be walking through the entire plugin, but I will be taking moments to stop and point out what is new as a few things have changed from the current version of VHS from the original release. Now, if you've used VHS before, you might notice that things are organized a little bit differently. You can think of VHS as working in three main sections, and then there's some post-processing down at the bottom. So the overall VHS look basically comes from the color control section right here, which you can enable or disable. Color controls include things like separate red, green, and blue treatment, as well as separate luma and chroma treatment. The tape damage section includes things like the tape noise overlay, distortion, pop lines, and tape wrinkle, that kind of stuff. A brand new section is the text generator. So if I click on enable text, we have a brand new text generator integrated, and I'll cover that in more detail. Now, the frame style, we found that it isn't really being used as a 4x3 treatment that much. So we've actually moved that down and just set it to the default of original frame size. The image offset is there if you are using a 4x3 image and you'd like to shift the overall image around. Tape style was also found at the very top and found it to be misleading because basically what the tape style is, is a LUT. It's a lookup table that pulls color from a number of different scans that we've taken from different tape decks. So we've renamed that and moved that down here. And we've also added the option for none to remove the LUT from the process entirely. Now, we've also added a post noise that goes on top of everything. This is actually a procedural noise that is there just to add a bit of grain to things. This render alpha checkbox is new, and this addresses a problem with VHS in the past, where if you applied it to something like a logo that had transparency around it, it would actually show gray from the original VHS noise print, and it didn't merge it back with black. So this render alpha does exactly that. If it is unchecked, it will not render the alpha and it will merge the image with black. If you'd like the alpha channel to show through, you can check render alpha and this will behave the way it did in the past. The random seed is simply something that controls random elements such as the pop lines, the tape wrinkle, the noise, etc. It's not something that you'll need to adjust all the time, but if you're finding patterns that repeat too often, you can adjust the random seed. Now, lastly, blend with original is pretty straightforward. It allows you to blend the original image back with the treated image. So now that we've covered the major sections and the post treatments down here at the bottom, let's dive into the individual sections in a lot more detail. Now let's dive into this top section, which is the color treatment section of VHS. The first control is pretty straightforward. Black point just raises the overall black point of the image. And this is commonly found in either poorly adjusted equipment or just older tapes that have started to lose their magnetism. Also, sometimes a victim of poorly adjusted equipment is overly saturated image or sometimes an undersaturated image. Now, under the hood, VHS processes the luma and chroma images separately and allows us to do things like blur the luminance separately from the chroma. Now, a common thing to do to get a very distinct VHS look is to really blur out the chroma channel. Much of VHS equipment dedicated much more resolution and attention to the luminance channel over the chroma channel. So with, with the chroma channel blurred out, we kind of mimic the look of losing much of the detail in the chroma of the image. And sometimes tape decks and camcorders tried to compensate by adding some sort of internal sharpening. And this is actually new with the newer version of VHS where a sharpening process is actually added to the image. Next, we have a color offset section. This allows us to shift around the chroma or color information independently from the luminance. This was a common problem with VHS tapes. Sometimes the color would actually drift around. And in fact, the chroma weave X and Y do just that. The chroma weave is the amount that the color will sort of wobble back and forth during playback. The speed at which it will wobble is the speed X or speed Y. So let's turn this up to perhaps 50, and I'll turn the speed up to 2. And as I scrub through this, you can see the color separation happening here. And as I play through it, it's actually weaving back and forth. 
Now instead of disabling the entire color treatment section, if you'd like to tone the whole color treatment down, there's a color mix slider right here that allows you to sort of dial in and out the amount of color treatment you'd like on the video. Now if that wasn't enough color control, there's a channel control section here, and this allows you to displace red, green, and blue independently. Not only does it allow you to offset each channel, but allows you to blur each channel independently. Next, we have the tape damage section, and this is where things really start to go wrong. The first thing in the tape damage section is the tape noise type. This is the actual VHS noise print that is mixed in with the image. We have a number of these that have been captured and are included with VHS. You'll note if you've used older versions of VHS that I've shifted the default from bad tracking over to VHS noise just to make the default settings a little less harsh. New to this version of VHS is this simple slider here called Adjust Noise Scale. And all this really is is a scale adjustment that applies to the noise print and allows you to scale it out horizontally. The idea behind this is so you can actually move the edges of the black frame out of view. The pop line frequency controls how often you see these little white lines pop on during the video. Let me cue it up right here. Turning this up, you'll see these a lot more frequently. You'll see them just about on every frame. The frame jitter control simply controls how the frame sort of wobbles up and down while it's playing. Next, we have a little subsection called interlace error, and I don't see this used too much, but it is a common error that happens with VHS tape where the color starts to get taken over by these colorized lines. Now, you can turn this up or down with the interlace error slider. The overall scale can be adjusted with this scale slider. The colors that are being introduced with this error are adjustable with color 1 and color 2. This offset slider is simply offsetting the current frame of the noise if you'd like to adjust exactly which uh, frame you are on. And the tape noise slider controls the actual tape noise being mixed with the original video. Notice that you can push this over 100 to kind of overdrive the noise back into your video. The distortion that happens to your video uses the tape noise and it uses the luminance of the tape noise to create a distortion map for your video. So as you play through it, as you see distortion hitting the image, it is actually working hand in hand with the tape noise itself. Let me do a quick reset here again, and let's go into the tape wrinkle section. We can turn this on, and as I scrub through this, you'll see a distinct error that happens due to a tape wrinkle floating through your image. We can change the overall size of it with the wrinkle radius. Uh, how quickly it scrolls through the frame, as well as what are the odds that you will actually see it uh, rolling through the frame. So a lower percent chance means you will see it less often. Next, let's get into the brand new section here, which is the text generator section. Again, you can enable or disable the entire text generator section just by checking that box. Now, we have three sections here. We have the play status, which is play, stop, record, etc. We have the time code, which is down here in the bottom right which we can disable or enable. And we have the tape speed, which is pretty straightforward, but we can also enable or disable that. Let's jump to that play status. You can change what the actual play status is, play stop, rewind, etc., or even something like auto calibration. Some of these actually have a corresponding icon, such as play or stop. You can include that or not include that if you check include icon. You can move that status position around using the status position control. And you can have it blink over time simply by checking blink. The timecode section has a few options in terms of the timecode format that it is showing. Sometimes it's just minutes and seconds. Uh, sometimes we've got hours, minutes, and seconds. And sometimes we can even include frames. Now, its time is actually dictated by its relative playback position inside the clip, but if you'd like to offset that time, you can simply go to the time offset slider and shift the time around manually. The tape speed is pretty straightforward. There's just a few options in here to select SP, LP, or SLP. 
Also new to this version is a visual browser that allows you to browse any of these presets and double click and apply them right to your video. And that is VHS from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. We'll see you next time. Many thanks to our friends at Pond5 for much of the footage we use in this tutorial. To see more of their footage, go to Pond5.com.